To create a fully operational main menu that also features an additional settings menu that you can easily drop into any of your games that you're developing. First, we are going to set up the game's internal resolution and scaling settings. Go to a project, project settings, then select window. We're going to change the viewport width and height to 1920 by 1080. This is the most common resolution that people usually use for their monitors. Now note how it says on the left, viewport. This is because this will affect the internal resolution of the game, which is the game's viewport. The word viewport is important as you can add other viewports to your scene as nodes, which act as the same as your game on its own. We will then change the mode from windowed to exclusive full screen. Now to avoid the internal resolution, increasing when someone with a monitor larger than 1920 by 1080 plays the game. We need to set the stretch mode to canvas items and make sure that the aspect is set to keep. Put it simply, disabled will cause the internal resolution of the game to be based on the size of the window. Then canvas items and viewport will scale the internal resolution in a way that keeps the aspect ratio, placing black bars in the areas where the screen doesn't cover. The difference between canvas items and viewport is that canvas items gives a smoother result, whereas viewport gives a more pixelated look. Changing aspect will alter the way that the internal resolution scales. Using keep will make sure that the internal resolutions ratio will remain the same on both axes. We are now going to create a new 2D scene. Right click it and select rename. Rename it to main menu and go to scene, scene save as and hit save. Press the plus and add a label node. Right click, rename and rename it to title. Go over to the right and scroll down until you find layout and in transform it will set the size to 1920 by 500. This changes the size of the label's extents. We can then set the text of our game's name. You can set the horizontal and vertical alignment of the text to center. Now to change the size of the text, you can either use the label settings property and create a new label settings, or you can scroll all the way down and select theme overrides and go to font sizes and change it here. I will set mine to 300 pixels. Additionally, in the theme overrides panel, you can change the color of the font, its shadow and its outline, as well as adding the shadow outline and other properties. Additionally, you can also change the style of the label node, which is just the background. Now to add buttons for our main menu, we will first add a center container. Go to Layout, Transform, and set the size to 1920 by 580, and change the position to 500 on the y-axis. All that this node does is it takes whatever control inherited node, which is a node with a green icon, and places it into the center of the container. Keep in mind that this means that the node will not take into consideration overlapping child nodes, as its sole purpose is to just take a control inherited node and center it. Because we don't want our buttons to be overlapping each other, we will add a VBox container. Right click, rename it, Main Buttons. A VBox container simply takes the control inherited nodes and places them evenly on top of each other. If you want something that does the same thing but horizontally, you can instead use a hbox container. And if you want something that gives control of the amount of columns and rows, look into using the grid container. Add a button node as a child. I will rename it to play and set the text to play in capitals. Then I'll scroll down and go to theme overrides and font sizes. And I'll set the font size to 75. Now select the button node and hit control or command plus D to duplicate it. Do this three times. Then change the names to settings, credits, and quit. Also make sure to set the text as well. Now to increase the separation between the buttons, select the VBox container, go to theme overrides and constants, and then you can enable the separation value and increase it. I will set mine to 16. Now when it comes to control inherited nodes that have a visual presence within your game, so nodes that typically aren't containers or the basic control node, you can change the style of the background, like what I described earlier with the label node. As for the button, you can also change other properties as well. Now despite there being no style set for the button nodes, there is obviously a style that is already present. This is due to the fact that every control inherited node unless set uses the default go.theme. theme to change this you can either set the theme override or you can create a new theme inside of the theme panel now before you create a theme you should always create it on the highest most control inherited node this is because when you set the theme it will apply that theme to every child control node and its children meaning that you will not have to select every single node and copy paste the theme that you created so with the center container selected we're going to go to theme and create a new theme and select it this will then show the theme tab in the bottom we can drag this to make it bigger. From here on the left we can see a visual demonstration of every visual control node in action and you can interact with each of these to see how they react. For a button we will press the plus here and add the button type. Once added you can go through all the different menus and add the different settings that you would like to edit. Simply press the plus. From here you can either set the value inside of this section or you can go down to the theme and select the drop downs and set it there. To remove a property simply select the bin icon and to remove a specific node from the themes select manage items press the bin button. Keep in mind that when you press the trash icon next to a node, if that node has no properties changed and there are other nodes that you have added that also have no properties changed, then pressing the trash button on one of those nodes will delete all the nodes with zero properties changed. You can also change what node you're working on by selecting the drop down. You can hide the default properties by disabling show default. This will only show what properties you're editing 
You can override every property by selecting override all, which will select every single property in every single tab for the selected node. With all of that explained, we will now add the rest of the buttons and nodes for our main menu. This is recommended before setting the theme as the in-game application of a specific control node may appear differently and not achieve the certain look that you want in the preview of the theme section compared to how it looks inside of the game. We will add two VBox containers, rename them to settings menu and credits menu. We will hold down control or command and select both of them. Then go to theme overrides constants and change the separation to 16. Notice that when I put in a number, it'll automatically enable it. I can then select anywhere to deselect them both. And then I will hide both the settings and main buttons as we'll begin working on our credits menu. First, add a label and set the font size to 120. You can then add all the text that you want for the label. To have the text in the label wrap around, set the auto wrap to word. Now to stop the label from making a new line for each word, you can go down and select layout and change the custom minimum size on the X value. I'll set it to a thousand. Like before, I will change the horizontal alignment to center. Then we also need a back button so we can exit the credits menu. To save some time, we can select the play button from before, right click it and select copy. You can then right click the credits menu and select paste. Rename it to back, change the text to back as well. And to make this button the same size as the buttons within the main buttons VBox container, we first need to go down to layout, go to container sizing and change the horizontal sizing to shrink center. Changing from fill to any of the shrinks will make the node shrink down to the minimum size that it can be while still having all of the text characters. Choosing center will place it in the center of the VBox container shrink begin we'll put it on the left and shrink end we'll put it on the right then we can change the custom minimum size on the x axis to 353 as that is the size of the buttons in the main buttons vbox container hide the credits menu and show the settings menu first we'll right click the back button and hit copy then right click the settings menu and paste it then we will add a checkbox node rename it to full screen then change the text to full screen as well scroll down to theme overrides font sizes and change it to 75 now when it comes to nodes like the checkbox or scroll containers some things within them will not be editable within the theme overrides panel. So make sure to check the custom theme that you created in the center container in the case that certain properties aren't available. Now we'll add a H slider node to the settings menu, rename it to main vol slider, and make sure to set the custom minimum size on the Y axis to 80. This is because it will be squished by the VBox container otherwise. We will also set the max value of the slider to 1 and change the step to 0.001. We set the step to be as low as possible so that the scrolling of the H slider is as smooth as possible. And we make the max value 1 because at 0 the volume will be muted and at 1, the volume will be on 0 decibels. Optionally, you can increase the max value to allow the player to increase the volume further. The value property doesn't matter now, as we will set that later in the code. Now, because the slider doesn't have any built-in text, and we don't want to deal with the equal separation of nodes when adding a label node, we can instead add a label node as a child of the slider. Put the horizontal alignment of the text to center, then scroll down to layout and change the minimum size to 484 by 55. And go to transform and change the position on the y-axis to negative 16. We'll scroll down again again and go to theme overrides font sizes and change the font size to 40 or then set the text to main volume now we can select the main vol slider and hit ctrl or command plus d two times name the first one to music vol slider and the next one to sfx vol slider also make sure to set the text in the labels as well finally make the settings menu invisible and make the main buttons menu visible as this is the state that the main menu should be when the player loads it to finish off the scene we can add a background to our main menu now there are many ways to create a background for your main menu and the best option depends on your game and the outcome that you want for the background. One way is to go to project, project settings, scroll down to rendering, select environment, then change the default clear color. Keep in mind that this will affect every single scene in your game. Now, if you only want to affect the main menu scene, add a color rec to the scene, then use the orange circles to resize it, go to ordering, and change the Z index to be the most negative. That way it'll appear behind the buttons and such. Then go over to mouse and change the filter from stop to ignore. This is important as it will stop the color rect from blocking the mouse input and detection, which that detection and mouse input should only be received by the buttons and such. You can then change the color. Alternatively, again, you could instead use a sprite node or a texture rect with tile on the stretch mode. Again, it all depends on your desired outcome. For us, a color rect is best as it simply just holds a color and we don't want to affect every single color of every scene in our game. Select the main menu node and add a script. Now on the left, select the play button, go to node, then in signals, we will double click the press signal and connect it. Make sure to repeat this step for every single button inside of our main buttons VBox container. For the play button, I will establish a level variable. You most likely already have a level variable in your game somewhere, so make sure to grab it if that's inside of a global script. We will then change the scene to that level variable. What this simply does is it goes to the resource folder, then goes to our levels folder, then selects the level scene with that level number and loads it. You can see this file structure in 
in the bottom left. You can also move scenes out of the folders by selecting them with left click. Then you can hold Control, Shift or Command to select others as well. And you can drag them towards a folder and drop them to move them. The line of code that we're using to change the level is a super simple line that is useful for most games. Next, we can quickly set up the quit button by making it run the quit function. As for both the settings and credits buttons, we will first set the main buttons container to be invisible. Then we set either settings or the credits menu to be visible. Now go to the left and select the back button for the settings menu. Double click pressed and connect it. Draw down and connect the credits menu's back button as well. You will notice that because their name and their receiver method name visible when setting the connection are the same, they both share the on back pressed button function. This is handy as we can now just make the main buttons container visible, then make both the settings and credits menu invisible. Now for the settings options, select the full screen node, then double click the toggled signal and connect it. Then select the main vol slider, connect the value change signal to the script. Do the same for the other sliders. Inside the full screen toggle button, we can set the screen to either full screen or maximize depending on if the button is toggled. Then we can add the built-in ready function and set the button press property for the full screen checkbox based on whether the game is already in full screen mode or not. Now as for the audio sliders, we need to make sure we go to the audio tab in the bottom. Then press the add bus button twice. So that way we have a bus for each different volume slider and we make sure to rename them appropriately. Keep in mind that the name that you set will be important in the script. Additionally, if you want the audio stream player to use a specific bus, make sure you set it in the right. Otherwise, it will just use the master bus by default. Now inside the value changed functions, we are going to set the volume using a linear value and grab the bus index with a name. Then set it to the value that is received through the value changed function. This value is the same as the value property in the slider. Then inside the ready function, we can set the value to the volume DB of each bus converted to linear so it suits the sliders appropriately. Now to make the main menu run as the first scene in the game when we export our game, go to project, project settings, scroll up and select run, then select the folder icon next to main scene, and select our main menu. As for keyboard and controller support for the main menu buttons, Godot uses what it calls focus. If you tried out the main menu with the default Godot theme, you will have already noticed the white border around the buttons after clicking them. This is because those buttons have gained focus. While the button has focus, using the arrow keys will move the focus to the nearest control inherited node that is able to grab focus in the appropriate direction. To add additional inputs to this, go to project, project settings, select input map, then enable show built-in actions. You will see UI accept, which is used to press a button. And if you scroll down, you will find UI left, right, up, and down, which is used to navigate. To add an extra input, press the plus, and either select one of the dropdowns and select the button from there, or type it in when it's listening for input. After you have selected a button, press OK to add it. To remove it, you can also press the bin icon. Going back to what I said before, you can actually manually override what nodes grab focus when navigating with a keyboard or controller. To do this, simply select a node, roll down until you see focus, and change the neighbors. Additionally, from here, we can change the mode as well. None will not allow any focus whatsoever. Click will only allow focus to be grabbed when clicking the node with the mouse, meaning that you can't navigate to the node with a keyboard or controller to grab its focus. And all will allow mouse click and keyboard and controller navigation to grab focus. Now if you want only the keyboard to grab focus and ignore the mouse click, simply go to mouse and change the filter from stop to ignore. Now to make our main menu controller and keyboard friendly, we need to add grab focus into the ready function and when we press the settings, credits and back buttons. Doing this will make sure that no matter what menu we select, there is at least one button that has focus, meaning that if we only have a controller plugged in, the player will never encounter a scenario where there is no button focused and they can't navigate the main menu. Polish the focus for the back button. We can check whether settings or credits was visible, then grab the focus based on the appropriate button. If you want to remove a specific node's focus, simply call the release focus function or change the visibility of the node to off then back on again. Also, keep in mind that only one node at a time can have focus. So if you set focus on a new node, the previous one will automatically release it.